This video was sponsored by AG1. Oh, hi. You might not realize it, but you're actually in the Airstream. I just don't normally show you this side because I've been working over there where you are. Last week, I got the kitchen, you know, good and knocked out, so that's exciting. And this week, we're moving down here. I'm going to build this wraparound bench seating area. Eventually, there's going to be a table in the middle, and that table will lower down to create a bed. You can take the cushions off the bench and put them where the table is, and then you have a nice bed area. So you have the bed at the front, and you'd have the bed at the back. But before we get to any beds, I have to make the bench, which means I got to get all this cleaned up figure out how I'm going to do boxes. I got to make it accessible so that I can get into the battery and the electrical and the water tank up here. So, you know, more cutting, more scribing, more yuck. But we'll figure it out. Follow along, watch the video, video description down there. Go sign up on Patreon. If you're not, I'm going to show a bunch of behind the scenes over there. And we're running a contest where you could win a chance for me to come out and build with you. So go sign up on Patreon. Well, as you can see, I've kind of been using this end of the Airstream to store all the random bits and bobs while I build the other end. So before we can start building the bench, I had to remove all these things. But that didn't take too long. I honestly took most of them and just shoved them in Craig's car to get them out of the way. Pretty soon I had a nice clean area in which to work. The next thing I needed to do was create some templates to match the actual shape of the Airstream wall so I could build my cabinet boxes off of those templates. So I cut some quarter inch plywood, I carried it into the Airstream, and I started scribing the end of it to match that nice curve that I'm so accustomed to. I'd love to say this is the first time I've had to do this, but it's not. I've had to do this a lot. Once I got the angle I needed to cut my pieces to, I used my Rockler Crosscut Sled with that nice angle adjusting fence, and I cut that perfect Airstream-esque angle. And what do you know? It fits. The only problem is it fits really nice right there, but scoot it down a little bit and it doesn't fit at all. So obviously I'm going to have to create individual templates for each piece of this cabinet box. So I set my first template aside, I grabbed another piece of quarter inch ply, and I cut that one down to fit. Now you'll notice I didn't cut it at a curve. I don't really care about that because you're not going to see it. All I care about is the fact that it's tight at the top and tight at the bottom. Next, I measured out the distance that I want the bench to stick from the wall. And then I used a square off of that whole electronics setup because I don't really care if it's square along the wall. All I care about is that it's square out from the wall, if that makes any sense at all. If it doesn't, well, I'll just show you what I mean. I marked it over here on one side, I drew a square line, and then I flipped around and I marked it on the other side because I don't care what it's doing along the walls. I just want my opening in the middle of the bench to be square so that when I build the table, well, I got nice clean lines. The walls are, well, they're just whatever they're gonna be. With my lines drawn on the floor, mapping out the distance I want my bench to stick from the wall, I marked that onto my templates and I took my templates back into the shop and I cut them to the right side. Now I have a front template and a back template, and these are going to be the outer pieces to my cabinet carcass. Speaking of cabinets, I'm going to be building those out of white oak veneered plywood. Because, well, I used some white oak in the back of the Airstream and continuity, right? You got to use the same materials all the way throughout, tie everything together, make it all designy and such. So I traced out the shape from my template onto my piece of white oak, and I cut those pieces down so they were the exact same size and shape as my templates. I have one for the front and one for the back. Then I went back into the Airstream and I measured the distance that I needed my front piece to be, and I cut another piece of white oak ply to match that. 
Then with all three of my white oak ply pieces cut, I went over to my workbench and I decided to hook them together with clamps to start with and then I could go into the Airstream and test to make sure they fit before I permanently hooked anything together. So with my three pieces clamped together, back into the Airstream it was, I stuck them against the wall and wouldn't you know, they fit pretty darn good. They were square along that pencil line on the floor and they fit nice and tight against the walls of the Airstream. I was finally ready to glue these three pieces together. So, well, believe it or not, I, I glued the three pieces together. I mean, I didn't just use glue, I used glue and then I also used some screws so that it'd be really nice and sturdy. And if you're wondering why I'm just drilling holes and putting screws through the face of this bench, well, it's because you're not gonna see it. I'm gonna cover all of this up before we're done. So just keep your thoughts and opinions to yourself until the end of the video. And then you can really let me have it in the comment section. Now that I had my three pieces of white oak ply hooked together, it was time to start bracing everything out. Now I did this exactly the same way I would build a normal cabinet box. I just ripped down some pieces of Baltic birch plywood, I added some pocket holes, and I did some bracing on the front and the back, on the top and the bottom, on the bottom, on the bottom, on the side, on the side, on the front, on the side, on the back, on the side. I mean, pretty much just put brace pieces everywhere I could. So that now I had a nice, sturdy cabinet box that would make up my bench seat. Then back into the Airstream, slid it into place, and we were on our way to a beautiful wraparound bench. Now that I had this one done over here, well, I have to do the exact same thing over here on this side. So let's rewind and do it all over again. I cut some more white oak pieces, I screwed them together with some pocket holes, I added some brace pieces, I hooked those together with some pocket holes, zip, zap, zoop, drill, drill, bang, and what do you know? I've got another identical piece on the opposite side. The only difference with this one is it's got a little cutout on the back to fit around those water and electrical lines. But it's kind of starting to look like a bench. With my two side boxes built, I needed to cut another piece to connect the two as well as start bracing out for the back section of the bench. So I went back into the shop, I ripped down another piece of white oak ply, I cut it to length, I carried it back into the Airstream, and I slid it in place. Now this is gonna get screwed to the end of both of those boxes. It's gonna create a nice little barrier between my bench and all that fancy electrical equipment that I'm not really sure what it does, but I know I need access to it. I'll, I'll learn eventually. I'm gonna become an RVer one way or another. Now, cutting this long piece of plywood to connect the two boxes was the easy part. The hard part is coming up with some sort of brace system that will support the back bench, but still give access to all that electrical equipment and not crush my water tank. While I was trying to figure that out, the foreman stopped by to show me his latest creation. He had been working with Legos all morning, and I have to say, his project looked a lot more fun than mine. He felt so bad for my predicament that he did give me a nice hug and a kiss, and then he was on his merry way. I decided the easiest thing to do was create some sort of frame system that would attach to that front piece of plywood and attach to the back wall and just kind of hover above all the important stuff. So back into the shop to cut a bunch of random pieces of Baltic birch, I decided to thicken up the outside so they'd be a little sturdier. To do that, I just glued two pieces of half inch plywood together to make a one inch piece because it's woodworking. You can go rogue if you want to. And that's exactly what I did. With my two outside pieces, now a very thick one inch versus half inch, I created a box. I glued and screwed it all together. I added some internal bracing that would both support the shelf as well as give me access to those electrical components. Again, I just glued and screwed this together. And then I added another middle brace piece because if a little plywood is good, then a lot of plywood has gotta be really good. Then I carried this whole mock-up thing into the Airstream and I was very happy to see that it actually fit right where I wanted it to. I still have access to all that electrical 
and it hovers right above my water tank. As I was looking at the framing around the water tank, I decided this might be a great opportunity to add a little more secret storage. I thought if I just put a quarter inch bottom on the back of this brace piece, I would have two very shallow little storage cubbies. And if you're thinking to yourself, well, that storage is gonna be useless. It's so shallow and small. Well, just wait. I think they're the perfect size to fit something very special but you'll have to wait till the end of the video for me to show you what that is. With my brace piece slash secret storage compartments glued and screwed together, I set those back in place, but before I hook everything in, I needed to secure my two side boxes to the floor. I just added some screws directly through my brace pieces to the subfloor, and they were rock solid, not going anywhere. Then I screwed my middle brace section that I just made to my plywood cross brace piece, and I screwed my plywood cross brace piece to my outer cabinet boxes. Man, I really just am at a loss for technical terms on all these parts and pieces. I mean, I've never done this before. What the heck do you call a floating storage brace piece that hovers above a water tank and some electrical? That's why I'm just going with center brace piece. With all my bench parts that were built secured in the Airstream, I needed to add some more bracing around those curved corners so that the bench top would have a lip to sit on. But because they were curved and I couldn't just bend regular plywood around that radius, I needed to do some kerf cutting. So using the trenching feature on my miter saw, I cut a bunch of kerfs and a piece of plywood and that allowed me to bend it to match the radius of that back corner. So bending it until it was tight against that back wall, I marked the length that I needed to cut it to. And then you're never gonna believe what I did next. I actually, I went into the shop and well, I cut it to the right length. Pretty crazy, I know. Then I carried it back into the Airstream and I slid it down in between my back brace piece and my side cabinet box because those are the names that we decided that we were going to call those things and now i have this nice lip all the way around that back corner that i'll be able to set a sheet of plywood on to make up my bench top so once i had that nice and wedged in place i just used some screws directly through that brace piece into the sheet metal wall trying my darndest to make these self-tapping metal screws go into the ribs of the Airstream so that it would be nice and secure. Once I had the curved cut piece installed on one side, well, I measured for the other side. Now this side is gonna be a little different because I do have this water inlet line thingamawatsit. I don't know what it's called, it's the tube where you you know, put water from the outside to into your into your water tank. You know, the the water tank tube. Anyways, I couldn't go through that, so I had to stop my curve cut piece just short so that I, I left room for that. So anyways, I cut it to that size, I made sure it was the same level as all my other pieces, and I screwed that piece to the wall. Now that I had that done, I thought, well, why stop there? Let's get crazy. Let's just add a little more bracing. You know, let's just go nuts. So I cut some more pieces, added some pocket holes, and added some additional bracing to support my bench top. And it was starting to look like, you know, maybe I actually knew what I was doing. But now I have to scribe some more pieces to match that curve for the top of the bench. Been there before. Didn't like it the first time, but here we go again. Now, thankfully, I got some packages delivered and I had these leftover scrap pieces of cardboard. So I figured that would probably work perfect to make some templates for that curved shape. Now, somebody also told me to get these blue little bendy things because you can bend them around any shape and then transfer that line onto your template and just cut it out. Problem is these blue things are so flimsy that I had no confidence that they were actually holding their shape when I moved them to transfer the line. But I thought I'd give it a go anyways. I traced out the line onto my piece of cardboard, I carried it back in, and would you believe 
yeah, it, it wasn't, it wasn't anywhere close. So I ended up just shoving the cardboard into the corner and bending it to the shape and then kind of tracing that out and then cutting it to fit until finally I had a template that actually fit pretty well. I don't know who makes those blue bendy things, but between you and me, they're a waste of time. Just do it the old fashioned way which I did in the end, and pretty soon I had two cardboard templates to match both of those back corners, which was gonna be by far the hardest part. Now that I had the cardboard templates, I just had to make them out of actual half-inch Baltic birch. So after ripping down a nice piece of ply on the table saw, I slapped on those cardboard templates and I traced them out until the shape was transferred in pencil onto my plywood. Then I cut my straight lines using the track saw right on top of my work surface. I mean, I cut right into my bench top because I just, I don't even care. No, actually I, I didn't. I set the plywood on top of some scrap pieces, but you thought I did for a second. After I cut my straight lines with the track saw, I went over to the band saw and as careful as I could, I cut that curve to match my pencil line. And you know, I got it close enough for something that's gonna be under a bunch of cushions. We'll just say that. After cutting it on the bandsaw, I fixed it a little bit, smoothed it out, if you will, with my sander, and I carried them into the Airstream to test to see how they fit. And I will say, for somebody who was tired of scribing corners like weeks ago, they fit pretty good. Let's say that I wanna start making healthy decisions and incorporating healthy habits into my everyday living. And I wake up in the morning and I wanna take some vitamins that are essential to that everyday living. Well, I could take some vitamin A and some vitamin C, some vitamin E, B6, B12, thiamine, iron, magnesium, zinc, calcium, or I could just do this. Doesn't that seem easier? Mm. And delicious. You see, AG1 is a daily foundational nutrition supplement that supports whole body health. While people do have a degree of individuality, our bodies rely on the same nutrient foundation to nourish the systems that power our health. I love how AG1 makes me feel. It gives me a little burst of energy and I know that I'm giving my body the stuff it needs on a day-to-day -day basis. Which also comes with some added benefits, better gut health, focus and energy, stress and mood balance, immune health. So if you wanna cut this out of your daily routine and simplify things, I highly suggest you try AG1. I have loved incorporating it into my day-to-day -day life and if you're interested in trying, you go to drinkag1.com slash bourbon moth and they're going to give my community a one year free supply of their vitamin D3 plus K2 and five free travel packs to get you started. Guarantee you're going to love it. So check that link in the video description and try yours today. I want to give a huge thanks to AG1 for sponsoring this video. With my two corner pieces scribed and in place, now it was time for the easy part. I mean, all that was left was a bunch of squares. So I took measurements for that middle section and back into the shop I went to cut out a piece of plywood that would fit in that hole. Well, I cut out a piece of plywood and then I ripped down this little strip on the back of it. You'll see what that's for here in a second. You see, I'm gonna put this piece along the back like that and then I'm gonna stick this piece on the front here, and then I can attach that little strip in the back, and then I'll use a hinge so that this front panel is like a lift-up lid. Huh? I was gonna do the same thing on the two sides, but then I realized that just a straight piece of ply wasn't gonna work over there. So I did have to do a little more scribe work to make sure that fit the wall nice. That didn't take too long, I had that piece cut, and then of course I had to do the exact same thing over on the other side, and it wasn't anywhere close to the same shape, so I had to scribe a whole new piece for that, but I'm not complaining, I got it done. Then I had to cut two more pieces for the lids, one on the right and one over on the left, and then I decided that it would probably be a good idea to add some ventilation holes in the tops of all these panels. You know, allow the seat cushions to breathe and 
all the electrical stuff underneath to breathe and well it just looks cool when you add vent holes and it also reduces weight so it's a win-win the only thing that's not fun is the amount of time you have to spend using the shaper origin to cut out a bunch of little slots but again i'm not complaining it's all part of the show Pretty soon, I successfully cut out a bunch of vent holes in each one of those top panels. Now, the router did leave behind a little bit of tear out as I was cutting out some of the holes across the grain. So I just chalked up a 16th inch roundover bit in my router and tear out? What tear out? Looks pretty darn good to me. That evening, I poured myself a nice tall glass of bourbon. Mmm, not too bad. And I spent the remainder of the night putting a nice coat of Rubio Monocoat on all my raw plywood pieces. Now, Rubio is linseed oil based, and you have to be real careful with your linseed soaked rags because they can spontaneously combust. That's called foreshadowing. Just wait. The next morning I took all of my pieces now that the Rubio was dry and I set them in place inside the Airstream. I had all my back brace pieces, my corner pieces, my lids, and those beautiful looking vent holes that just made it look fancy. Next it was time to secure all these pieces to my bench. So I started with those back brace pieces and I simply attached them by countersinking some holes and adding some screws. Yes, the screws are going to be visible, but, well, I guess they're not really going to be visible. There's going to be a cushion sitting on top of them. Then it was time to attach my hinges. The hardest part with the hinges was getting this godforsaken plastic off of them. I mean, who packages these things? It took me like five minutes just to strip the cellophane. Finally, using my metal chop saw, I cut my first hinge to length. And when it came to my second hinge, I didn't even take it out of the saran wrap. I was like, forget that. I just cut it to length with the plastic still on there. And you know what? After cutting it, the cellophane just came right off. Must have been mad that I sliced through it. Take that, cellophane. With all my hinges cut to the right length, of course, I carried them back into the Airstream. I set them in place. I drilled a bunch of pilot holes in every one of those five million little screw holes. And then once you drill the pilot holes, well, you're not done there. You got to take a million screws and put all the screws in there. And then you open the lid and you realize because these hinges were designed for three quarter inch material, all the tiny little screws poked out the bottom. So you're going to have to go back in later and grind those off. And you might be wondering, well, why did you install them on the top like a dingus? Why didn't you install them in the crack like you normally would with a piano hinge? Well, it's because I'm using half-inch material, my wife's a freak, and the hinges are designed for three-quarter. So the only way they would work is by me installing them on the top. So now you know. Anyways, after installing the hinges, I cut down a bunch of white oak that I was going to use to trim out everything and make it look all fancy. So I cut my first piece of white oak to the right size and I slid that in the back. Now this is going to create a half inch lip all the way around the top which will help keep my cushions in place and you know that way they won't slide off the front. So I just used the half inch setup block to make sure that I had that nice uniform lip and I cut all my corners to this nice miter so everything would flow and look nice and mitery and the such. I don't really have anything else to say about that. I, I ran out of voiceover material. Anyways, after I cut my trim pieces, I added some glue and I squished it on there. Then I used a 16 gauge brad nailer to just hold it in place. I say hold it because the nails aren't going to give it any sort of strength whatsoever. They're literally just holding the trim in place until the glue dries, which will be plenty strong and will be very nice and secure. 
Now when you're doing trim like this with these mitered corners, it can be hard to get a nice tight seam. So after I get everything nailed together, I like to take a little glue, I squish it into that corner with my finger, and then I use something round like a screwdriver to burnish that edge. Kind of fold those fibers over on each other and it gives it a nice closed miter. Hit it with a little sandpaper and you're good to go. I just kept working my way around until I got to this side and instead of running a piece all the way to the wall, I just put a little tiny itsy bitsy trim piece on because eventually I'm gonna build a side table and well, the side table is gonna come out to right there. So I stopped the trim right there. Now you know. With all the upper trim in place, I had to add this lower lip. Now, as I mentioned before, there's gonna be a table in the middle of this wraparound bench that will lower down to become the bed. So I needed a lip for that table to rest on once it's lowered down. So I cut some more pieces of three quarter inch white oak, and I'm simply wedging these in place and gluing them to that upper trim piece. Now you might be thinking, is that really gonna be strong enough? Just one piece of wood glued onto another? Well, if you don't think it is, go click that thing in the upper right hand corner and watch my joint test video. Believe me, it's gonna be strong enough. Now while I was busy doing this, remember those linseed oil soaked rags I said was foreshadowing? What you doing? Well, you know that whole spontaneous combustion thing? <laughs> the fire department's here. What's up, guys? Crack can? This is linseed oil. That'll do it. Fun. Nice combustion. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Outside. All right, well, looks like you got it. Yeah. What do we've got to uh, alert neighbors that saw it? <laughs> Well, those rags I had used to apply Rubio on all the plywood pieces the night before, I had set outside on top of the garbage can. I thought there was enough airflow for them to dry safely out there, but I was wrong. Sitting in the hot sun, they did spontaneously combust, melting through the lid of the garbage can, igniting a bunch of sawdust that was inside, and yes, catching my flipping fence on fire but thankfully it was just the fence and not my shop. Be careful with linseed oil soaked rags. After thoroughly thanking my neighbor for putting out the fire and apologizing to the fire department for bringing them out for nothing, well, it was time to get back to the bench. Now, I decided it would be cool to add some sort of wood detail facade to the front of the entire bench. So I took a bunch of leftover white oak scraps and I re them down the middle so I had two pieces that were roughly 3 eighths of an inch thick. Then I ran them through the planer to bring them down to exactly 3 eighths of an inch and I ran all those pieces through the table saw cutting them right into little 3 quarter inch wide strips. Kind of like this. My plan was to lay them out horizontally to cover the entire front of the bench and give it a cool textural detail but i didn't just want strips i wanted them to have more detail than that so painstakingly i ran each strip through my router table twice adding an eighth inch round over to both sides this gave it a nice textured detailed look and to tell you the truth i absolutely hated it i thought this was ugly and there was no way i was going to put that on the front of the bench there goes three hours of my life I'll never get back. In the end, I just decided it was too much. I liked the clean look of the bench the way it was with the veneered ply. Now, the unfortunate part was I had always intended to put some wood detail on the front of the bench. So I didn't exactly build it in a way that I should have had I been just wanting the veneered ply, which meant now I had to do a little trim work to cover up some screw holes and some raw exposed plywood that well, wouldn't have been there had I been planning on doing it this way from the beginning. But that's okay, we can figure this out. I made some quick little corner trim pieces to cover up all my exposed ply and a few other little random trim pieces to cover up some screw holes. 
And when it's all said and done, I think it'll look like it was intended to be that way all along. So I went back into the Airstream, removed all of my clamps, and then, well, I was gonna sand it down, but I remembered, oh yeah, Craig's back from vacation. I'll just make him sand everything down. I mean, he loves to sand, so I don't wanna deprive him of that. After he sanded everything thoroughly, I went back in there to add on my trim pieces. I mean, I was nice enough to not add those until after he sanded, because that way he didn't have to sand around them. Pretty soon I had all the exposed plywood and screw holes covered up. Everything was looking nice and clean, and I was very happy that I decided just to leave it the plywood and not add all those horizontal oak pieces. I just think it would have been too much. Once I got all the trim pieces installed, I was nice enough to let Craig come back in and apply some Rubio Monocoat Cotton White. And I have to say, he did a pretty darn good job, and the bench was looking great. That's not creepy at all. It felt really good to get this one crossed off the to-do list on the Airstream projects. Yes, I still have to build a bed to go in the middle, but I also have to get the floor laid and the side table done and the cabinets for the fridge done. But for now, I'll soak in the small victory of having the bench seat complete. There's tons of storage in this thing, which is great. And if you're wondering, what about that small storage in the middle? What on earth are you gonna be able to fit in there? Well, I don't know. How about a bottle of E.H. Taylor Straight Rye? Or how about a bottle of Weller CYPB? Or maybe a bottle of Weller Single Barrel? Or if none of those work, I could always fit a bottle of Stag Junior. Or a bottle of Four Roses Single Barrel? Or maybe a bottle of Bombergers Small Batch? Or a bottle of Larceny Single Barrel? Or Maybe even a Victor's Sour Mash. I mean, there's plenty of things I can fit in there if I want to. So, get off my back. Hey, we did it. Well, I did it. You really didn't help that much. You just kind of sat there and watched, but I appreciate it. One step closer to having this Airstream done. Now I still have to build the table that's going to be on a special base so the whole top will lower down, it'll get caught on this lip and create a platform that will become the bed. Now we're going to have custom upholstered cushions that go all the way around the outside with custom upholstered back cushions. The back cushions are the perfect size that this back cushion and that back cushion and this back cushion will all fit here in a row and create the bed, which would be pretty sweet, but I'm not going to have those done for a while. Things that we still have left to do. We gotta build the cabinet for the refrigerator, I gotta build the little side table, and the bathroom. And then we're done. Getting pretty close. Hopefully you enjoyed this one. Check the video description down below for links to products and tools that we use. There's a link to our Patreon account down there. There's a bunch of fresh merchandise over on the website. T-shirts, tank tops, hats, plans, all sorts of new stuff. So click that link, go check it out. Until next time, got to remember where I put that bourbon. Oh, yeah. Forgot. <laughs> it's all in here. And I need one of those. One of those. Ooh, single barrel. All right.